in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, my God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love. Thank you for this precious moment. Thank you for the privilege that you've given to us to come before your presence. Thank you, Lord, my God, because you ordained family. That's why you created um, Adam. And when you created Adam, you said it is not good for man to live alone. And then you created Eve. Lord, my God, we ask, oh God, Lord, my God, that Lord, as many marriages that may be going through one turbulent or the other turbulence or the other, Father Lord, we ask, oh Lord, my God, that there'll be healing tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, my God, that our lives, our marriages will not remain the same in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, my God, that Lord, lives will be touched, that marriages will be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Father Lord, my God, we give you praise, we bless and adore you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your mercy thank you for your presence my god teach us tonight in the mighty name of jesus as many oh god that will minister lord my god we ask oh god they will minister healing they will minister grace they will minister love they will minister peace in the mighty name of jesus mighty god everlasting father oh god we pray oh god even for your daughter that lord even as she ministers even in the word my god we ask oh god that lord she will speak from your throne of grace in the mighty name of jesus she will not speak oh god to entice any man but she will speak oh god from your wisdom oh god from your from the, the the words that you have put in our mouth in the mighty name of jesus fill our mouth oh god with your utterance in the mighty name of jesus that lord at the end oh god we will know that indeed you have visited our homes our marriages in the mighty name of jesus thank you heavenly father in jesus mighty name amen and amen i'm sure somebody is shouting amen i want you to shout amen till the devil knows that indeed that you know you are there and you have heard you and you have prayed unto the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord, praise the lord. today and like I said, this is the marriage mirror part two. Marriage mirror part two. We had uh, the marriage mirror part one. You know, uh, I think that was in January. It's in January or oh, December. Oh my God, time has um, <laughs> time has December. December. Oh my God, oh God, the time has passed. Long has been long spent. So we had living and cleaving part one which means that you know when you get married what time at what time do you leave at what time do you cleave you know when you the bible says that you know for this we a reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and cleave you know with his wife and we had a very in, intensive discussion at that time today we are having the marriage mirror part two and I, I want to throw in some questions i actually want to to make sure that we have a very nice discussion today praise the lord what time at you know sometimes we 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 when we go into marriage we begin to wonder oh what is expected or our own ideas of what you know we should we should do in the marriage or what part we should play in the marriage you know as husband as wife you know there are so many things that run through our minds you know especially if you probably you got married in in nigeria and then you came over here and you know you, you know how it is especially in africa you know if you're if you're from africa you know i know there's some of some of us who are not from africa but you know for so those who, who've come from africa and especially if you are a man and you've come from africa and you know you begin to wonder you know oh my wife is telling me he's talking to me he's telling me to do this he's telling me to do that you know that kind of thing uh, uh, where, where is submission? Where is submission? Uh, what do you see as submission? Uh, that's what I want us to discuss today. Is submission respect or is respect submission? Or, you know, what, what, uh, what's your own idea about submission? What, what does the world say about submission? How do you look at submission? Do you look at submission as, you know, as being uh, um, 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 a, a, a kind of slavery thing? Oh, he says I should submit, you know, uh, that means he think, does he think like, 
I'm, I'm, I'm his house girl, you know, he's telling me to submit, or the Bible says I should submit. Does the, 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 am I the house girl? I'm the one who brings the money. I'm the one who brings more money. How, how can I submit? You know, sometimes, you know, those kind of ideas, you know, begin to run in our heads. You know, it says he's the head of the house. So if he's the head of the house, does it mean he's not going to do anything? Does it mean, you know, when I come back from work, he's there watching the television and he's waiting for me to, to come back from work and cook and, you know, and while he, you know, while he uh, does, uh, 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 sits down and, and watches the, the, the telly, you know, today I really want to welcome everyone, everyone to this beautiful discussion i'm waiting you know for 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 the, for the discussion i'm waiting for people to you know to bring their ideas we want to learn from one another you know it is not about how many years you've been married we can we can even learn from somebody who just got married you know a year ago and we can learn from somebody who's who got married you know many years ago so I'm throwing the floor open. What do we think, you know, is submission? What, what do people think about submission? How do we look at submission? What's your view, views about submission? What does the Bible say about submission? What do you think that, you know, respect? If you wake up in the morning and say, good morning, sir, you kneel down and say, good morning, sir. Is that submission? Or do you wake up in the morning and say, oh, good morning, you know, or you don't say good morning. Is that not submission? Is that, you know, some people mix it. What is, what do you think about submission? Is also, is submission respect or is respect submission or are they two different things? The ball is in your court. Come on. Let's have this discussion now. Praise the Lord. Who oh, have I got? And please, can I also say, we are going to have the time for for question and answers and so please you know whatever questions you have make sure you know either you put it on the chat or um um you 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 make a note of it um when that time comes for for questions we will deal with your questions praise the lord can i hear somebody say hallelujah because he looks like Hallelujah. I'm the only one there. Praise the Lord. God. Come on, you can unmute and begin to talk now. If not, I will call people myself. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's talk. Let's talk, let's talk, let's talk. Come on. Praise the Lord. Somebody give me a thumbs up if you really underst understood what I talked about just now, at least. Give me a thumbs up if you know that. Okay, I understand your question. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The time is going, you know. <laughs> Nobody wants to start first. Hello. Praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you. There's somebody raising it's up their hand. Yeah, yeah. Is there, you raising up your hand to to say no, you no, understood no, what I, I said for me? Yeah, or are you raising up your hand to talk? Please unmute yourself. Feel free to unmute yourself and let's have this discussion, please. Hello. I'm going to call on people, you know. I want to give a thumbs up that I um, understand your question, your what you just said. Yeah. I think from my own perspective, I feel submission in marriage is a, is a spirit of of respect that the wife gives towards um, the husband. Her husband. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sister, for me. God bless you. Thank you. Okay, any other person? Any other person, please? I really don't want to be calling people. I'm going to call, and uh, you know me. I, I'm the kind of person that I will call the ones that I know. <laughs> when you least expect, expect it. <laughs> Come on, let's, let's talk. Let's talk. Yay! Okay. 
Okay. I can see Pastor Maria. Are you do you want to talk to us? Come on, talk to us. <laughs> Okay. Actually, I was just um, unmute. I think you should unmute yourself so that we can hear you more. Oh, okay. Is that why okay. you were having? Can you hear now? Can you? Can you hear now? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Actually, I wasn't raising my hand, but we're just claiming something. However, that's fine. You know, you're talking about what is respect. Respect has um, different definition for me because the way I see respect might be different from the way my husband see respect. So that's why mutual understanding is um, important because, like for instance, we are from two different cultures, you know, and um, in my culture, we don't like kneel or prostrate or bow to greet anyone right and then um, we can just say good morning we we'll call your name and that is it and my mm. husband is from the culture that respects in in terms of kneeling you know just some um, bowing and all of that posturing uh, has a um, serious meaning and it goes a long way especially the old um, older people so if you have like um elderly people in your midst and you're greeting them calling their names and not showing those you know gesture so no matter how it is in your heart to them is disrespect so when when i marry my husband i get to i i, I learned their culture and I, I needed to understand how things are done there as well for the fact that i'm coming from a culture that doesn't practice that doesn't mean that i shouldn't um, do the same so hmm. for me that is respect that's why i say it's mutual it's trying to understand what are those um uh, his values so when i respect his values irrespective of what i think about it when i respect his values to him that is respect although i'm sacrificing it's costing me something i don't see it as anything but I have to understand his values and respect those values. If he says, I don't want this thing to be here. I want it to be positioned elsewhere, even though I don't like it, but I respect that. So that's, that, I think that's respect for him. It's not about what I call him by his name or I kneel down in the morning and all of that. So I think respect is um, um, understanding that person's, is a mutual agreement, understanding that person's value and respect in it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we've heard from Sister Fumi who said, you know, submission is the spirit of respect. And Pastor Maria said respect is, you know, is mutual agreement and, you know, is respecting his value. She gave an example saying that, you know, if, if he doesn't like something being there, even though she doesn't like it, then she, she, she makes sure that that thing is kept where he, he, he likes it to be that to me also is part of submission because you know you need you are submitting to his value to his authority praise the lord any other person wants to say something about submission you know i only gave that example like if submission respect or is respect submission you know but the main topic is actually submission so please can somebody else you know on mute and talk to us. We want to learn. We want to learn. You can never, you know, the marriage, I say, is that is the only school that you go to. They give certificate before you even go to the school. At least, if you, go, I don't see anybody who, when you went to your primary school, secondary, and university, the, I don't think they gave you a certificate, you know, as you got into the school. They say, take, take, this is your certificate for coming to the school. You went through the classes, you passed the exams, but in marriage, they give you certificate on the day, on the very day. I say, this is your marriage certificate. Then you start to learn inside. So it's, it's the opposite of attending school. Every year, every day you learn and you learn new things. You know, sometimes different things happen 
you know, the same person you knew 10 years ago probably is not, you know, is not the same person, either because hormones are setting, age are setting, you know, and things like that. So, you know, we begin to learn new things about, you know, the person. So what is submission? Somebody speak to me. Somebody's raising up their hand. Oh, come on then. Who is that? I can't Bolaji. see. If it, oh, Bolaji, please, please, please speak to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Unmute yourself. Thank you, sir. Please yeah. unmute yourself. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, Thank yes. Um, yeah, very interesting topic. But I don't know. I'm basically trying to see this from um, a, a different perspective. Four things hmm. were mentioned here. Hmm. We have respect. We have submission. We have mutual understanding. The fourth was not mentioned, but I believe that it should as well. Slavery. You understand? When do okay. we, you know, when I mean slavery, I mean, you know, when, uh, that is when submission goes to the extreme, mm. you know, and um, people tend to basically abuse this as well. So mm. in seeing all this for, I basically want to put it in perspective like this. You know, every, I mean, respect is basically... Um, the the beginning of the whole thing respect mm. mutual under respect submission and slavery are basically interrelated but i think the thing that basically differentiates it or separates it is the the other you must have mutual understanding you know so mutual mm. understanding is what basically puts it in perspective so that you do mm. not um cross the line of um between submission and slavery mm. you know because I, um, you know, the tendency as a human being to have this entitlement mentality, you understand, or mm. this, you know, selfishness that, oh, you know, yes, if it has to be my way or the highway is mm. there. And without mm. basically giving um, thought to what the other person wants or needs as well. Because mm. remember that marriage has to be enjoyed and happiness has to be found by both parties, mm. not mm. just one. You know, yeah. if not, yeah. uh, it's going to crash before it starts. Mm. So I, I think that, you know, um, the, the, you know we, we need to basically balance it by trying to separate. Yes, we keep telling men, women, respect, respect. I mean, uh, submit, 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 submit. Mm. But I think it's beyond that. You know, mm. men, men to a large extent must have some, uh, must submit as well. Yeah. You understand? Mm. And, but, they, but they don't call it submission. They, they, they'll say they understand, you know, mutually. <laughs> you know? So um, that's, that's basically, uh, you know, what I have to say about the whole thing. And I think it should be separated from submit, submit, submit that everybody is saying. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. That's, you know, that's a man talking. Praise the Lord. The man is saying, you know, thank you so much, our brother, brother Volaji. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, he said that respect, submission and slavery, you know, um, um, is equals to like mutual, uh, you know, understanding and marriage is meant to be enjoyed. Praise the Lord. You know, there is a saying that marriage is meant to be enjoyed and not endured. Praise the Lord. I want to hear yeah. another man speak. I want to hear another man speak about submission. How do you think, what do you think about submission? What do you think submission is? Well, you know, let, let's understand it. We women, we want to learn. We want to understand. We want to understand you men. You know, because sometimes, you know, we, you know, we women, we say our mind the way it is. But, you know, men, you know, sometimes they don't talk. But we need, we need to understand you. We want to understand you. We want to love you as we should love you. And so we really want to understand. So we need the, the, the we need a man's, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, we need a man's side about um, 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 submission. Praise the Lord. Is there a man in the house that is going to talk to us? Praise the Lord. Can I call on Ima Emmanuel? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I call on Ima Emmanuel about submission? Is he in the house? <laughs> Unmute yourself, sir. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, uh, I really don't have much to say about submission rather than uh, uh, go to Matthew 8. Um, Matthew 8. You for want submission, I really don't. Um, I for one, I really, I'd rather a man be uh, a couple remain naturally themselves. Be yourself and every other thing will fall in place. That's my own uh, take. We know of a um, couple where when they meet, it's so sweet, so hunky-dory that um, their dream of everything falling in submissiveness and that kind of is not a problem until when the banana peels of life starts slipping, slipping into the relationship. So I believe ability to submit effectively depends on um, the um, uh, the atmospheric pressure within the relationship. When there are pressures in the relationship, that's where you now see problems of submissiveness. Submissiveness, I believe, should be reciprocal, comes from both sides. The Bible says that... Um, a man has to love the woman first before she submits. If um, a man does not show any sign of love or does not give love, how do you expect the woman to submit? That's what I believe. So it's reciprocal. But the woman, the man has to be the first person to make the move in terms of loving. Then uh, a man, a woman will now be able to submit. Praise the Lord. So that's why I Hallelujah. say Matthew 8, if you, if you remember the centurion, when Christ uh, was to um, uh, go to his house, he said, oh, just speak the word here. You don't have to come because I am a man under authority. I have soldiers. When I say this, do this, he do it. That means what that uh, aspect, why I'm picking that aspect is that you have to be you have to be someone that has authority. That is the, the um, spirit of submissiveness, sub submissiveness has to be there within you. That man also was submissive to his own uh, subordinates for him to receive submission from his soldiers. So he believed that when uh, Christ speaks, okay. that even the, the, the demons or whatever will respect him. Because he knows what it is to be a person under authority to receive submissiveness. So that means, what I'm saying in essence is that the man has to be submissive to an authority that he is under for the woman to be able to be submissive to him. In a nutshell, when you are a man, you are not submissive to the wills and the uh, details of uh, what God has said concerning you as a man. How then will you expect a woman that has been put under you to submit to you? So that's my take, that uh, submissiveness is reciprocal. The first move should be the man should give love before the woman submits. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate that. Thank you, sir. That's that's brilliant. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to summarize what, you know, what he said. He said, he talked about Matthew 8, and he said, you know, you need to be naturally yourself. You need to naturally be yourself, and you need to have the ability to submit effectively, you know, that, and he says that the ability to submit effectively depends on the atmospheric pressure. So, and he's also said that submission is reciprocal, and that the man has to be the first to submit, and you have to love you know, he, he, he talked about, you know, the man, if the man is not submissive to the authority, to the authority that is under, how does he expect the woman to be submissive? You know, thank you so much. Um, I'm really grateful for that. Um, I think, you know, 
it's a good place to to just you know stop for now but i want to just read something from ephesians 5 um from verse 21 you know the ephesians 5 from from just from verse 21 it says submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of god wives Submit yourself unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And it says, therefore, in verse 24, it says, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husband in everything. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Praise the Lord. I will stop there. I think it's something that, you know, we can read in our own time. I'm going to stop there for, for now. Um, like I said, please gather your questions together and, you know, and let's really talk more about about this um uh, we're going to go into i'm sure we've had a nice discussion haven't we come on let's put our hands together and clap for jesus praise the lord i wish this discussion can go on and on and on and on but you know we are we are we are limited by time you know but you know we're going to go into music ministration at the moment have we got like body? In the light on the in the house. Wow! Hallelujah. God, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here. Um, it's good to join you. We bless God for the talk. We enjoy a little bit of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're just gonna do um, a song about love. Your love is great. Because I believe um, in the season of Valentine, talking about families and all that, we should talk about love. So um, be blessed. If you know the song, just join us where you are. But mute yourself so that um, there won't be any thing. God bless you as you listen. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
That was a okay, magnificent. Okay, hallelujah. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is our time up now, right? Or Sister Lola, how do we have a chance for one more? I think we can do one more. You could do one do more. One. We can okay. do one more. Praise do the Lord. one okay, more. Right. Okay, Praise so we we'll just do hallelujah. because of who you have. We give you glory. It's just going to be a simple worship, and um, I'm sure you'll like it. Just enjoy with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord.
Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you so much. How many of us enjoyed that ministration? I did. I wish it wouldn't end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless God for your life. And we pray that the, the anointing will continue to increase upon your life and upon your ministry in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For those of you who are just joining us, we... We've had a very beautiful discussion um, before you joined, which was, you know, on submission. Um, I don't know what your ideas are about submission. Um, we asked the question, is submission respect? Is respect submission? Which one is it? And I've also said that, you know, if you have any questions, please write it down or put it in the chat room and we will take it after, you know, we have heard the um, exhortation. Tonight, I want to invite a beautiful sister. She's so loving, very respectful, very beautiful, very nice, always smiling. Um, she is the leader of this um, uh, ministry, Fusion Ministry. We call the couple's um, um, ministry the Fusion Ministry. You know, fusion, you know what that means. Um, and so I want to invite her. She is, you know, a woman of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, you know, very humble, very, very, I mean, when I, I don't know how else to describe her. She's, you know, a sister, she's a mother, she's a wife, you know, she's everything. She's beautiful in and out. Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want to invite our darling, beautiful Minister Lola Okoya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. It is such a wonderful privilege to be here tonight. Praise the Lord. And um, I really appreciate everyone for taking out time to come on this platform this evening. I say, God bless you real good. Praise the Lord. Let's just say a word of prayer before the um, teaching tonight or exhortation. Our Father and our God, we bless you. We thank you, almighty God, for another time like this in your presence. Father, we started this ministry, this program. We had one last year, and this is the second one. Father, it is not by might. It is not by power. It is by your grace, O oh Lord. Father, it is by your grace that we are all gathered here. Even in times like this, Father, we thank you because we're able to gather together. Lord, we bless your name. Father, we ask that tonight you will teach us. You will teach us. You will restore. You will repair tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. You will connect. You will connect with us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We will connect with you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, people will come to know you as the Lord of all. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Ancient of Days. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. You know, I was, uh, I was really, um, uh, during the discussion time, I was really having 
a lovely time, you know, with different opinions, different um, comments about submission. Praise the Lord. You know, it's, uh, it's, it, it's very good. Praise the Lord. Very good. You know, submission, respect, and, you know, all, all, all the comments that um, came up earlier. But um, tonight, the Lord is going to help us. I am going to teach about the role of the wife, the role of the um, husband in a marriage. God bless you, Dick and Jones. Um, I've been married for 21 years, if I'm right. I think my husband is somewhere there. <laughs> 21 years and I have four beautiful children, praise the Lord. And honestly, uh, I think for the first 10, 10 years or, yeah, 10 years, it was a battle. What is my role? as a wife what am i supposed to do what do i bring to this marriage and this man lord that you've you know you've given me to what's his role what's he supposed to do what you know what's he supposed to bring into the marriage praise the lord earlier uh, last year when we started this program the marriage mirror you know I sort of, um, I, I talked about, you know, the reason for, for, for this theme, the marriage mirror. As we know, a, mar a, a mirror is a reflection of your, when you, is a reflection of yourself. When you look into the mirror, what, you know, you've put in is what you see. Praise the Lord. If, if, if your hair is looking scattered, if you're, if you're looking tattered, that's exactly what you're going to see when you look in, in the mirror. Praise the Lord. And likewise, your marriage, when you enter into a marriage as well, ask the wife, what do you bring into the marriage? What do you see? What do you have to offer? And the, the husband, likewise, what do you see? Praise the Lord. And so, you know, I've, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people and they've, they've um, said a lot of things. Is, is marriage 50-50? Am I, as the woman, am I a doormat? Am I the slave? Praise the Lord. I want to tell somebody tonight. The Bible says we are wonderfully and fearfully made. So as a wife, you are beautiful. And there's a reason God created you. Okay? Just in case you're not, there's, you're not sure about that tonight. There's a reason God created you. There's a reason God, you know, removed a rib from Adam and closed the flesh up and, you know, created the woman. So the woman was created out of the man, praise the Lord. And so therefore tonight, what is a wife? How are you supposed to act? What's a wife supposed to be, be like? Well, the scripture says it all. Um, tonight, I'm talking to us as uh, believers. If you're not born again, don't worry, there'll be a time for that sometime during this program. Praise the Lord. But... As a wife in a marriage, the first thing you should know or the first thing, the, the most important thing is that Jesus is the center of, you know, of everything you do in your marriage. Praise the Lord. Then the, the man and then the woman. If you turn with me to Genesis, Genesis um, 2 verse 18 praise the lord are we there genesis 2 verse 18 i'm actually going to like read 18 19 and 20 and then that explains to you what 
your role is as a wife. Praise the Lord. It says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. I would like to read the amplified um, version because that really explains it. So just in case you're thinking, what's my role? I'm a wife. So what am I supposed to do? Am I the doormat? Am I the slave? You know, amplified says, now the Lord God said, it is not good, beneficial for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper, one who balances him. Praise the Lord. A counterpart who is suitable and complementary for him. I don't know if you've been able to pick out some things here. But just in case you're wondering what's your role, your role as the wife in the marriage is to be a helper. Praise the Lord. That is the bottom line. Your role as a wife in a marriage is to be a helper. God saw that the man was lonely, that he needed a companion, he needed a helper. And that's why you were created from him and brought to the man. Praise the Lord. Verse 19 says, you know, I will make for you and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. And whatever Adam called everything, every living creature, that was the name thereof. Praise the Lord. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. So, a wife is a helper of the husband. Now, the next question will be, what kind of helper? Tonight, the word slave has been used. People have said, am I a doormat? Is my husband supposed to just be you know, there while I slave, cook the food, take care of the children. In fact, some homes, the wife is the one that fends for the house, for the home. Tonight, the word of God, nothing broken, nothing taken away. The word of God says a wife is a helper of the husband. Praise the Lord. Now, what kind of helper? The word of God says a helper comparable to him, according to the word of God. A helper comparable to him. So you are your husband's helper. You are comparable to him. Praise the Lord. Not substandard. Hallelujah. Comparable to him. Please follow me carefully tonight. Praise the Lord. Now, your role as a wife has been assigned by God. It's well stated in Genesis 2 verse 18. And assigned, you're, you're an assigned as a helper. It's an assigned role. It's an assigned office. Praise the Lord. Now, what are you meant to achieve as a helper? If you turn with me to Genesis 1, praise the Lord, verse 28. Genesis 1, 28. So we've established that you're the helper. Now, what are you supposed to do as the helper? What are you supposed to help your husband achieve as a helper? 28 says,
praise the Lord. And God bless them. Please follow me. What are you meant to help your husband achieve? And God bless them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every, every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So your accomplishments is for both of you, right? That, and that's why God created a helper. It's for you to, to be fruitful, not just in childbearing. Multiply. So whatever your husband is doing, you're supposed to help him multiply. You're supposed to help him subdue. You're supposed to both have dominion over everything that the Lord has created. Praise the Lord. And that is, you know, the commission as the helper. You are, you know, supposed to um, help your husband accomplish. Praise the Lord. Now, the next question will be, well, I'm a career woman. I'm a strong woman, just as the world says it today. I'm, I'm, a, I'm strong in my own right. So I, I have my career to face. Please, whatever you do as a woman that does not bring out the best in your husband, you are not obeying what God has said. I hope you're following me tonight. You know, by... Um, when he, you do the, the, the first, the, the first program we had, we talked about, um, leaving, cleaving and becoming one. So in a marriage, whatever you, the, you know, the oneness involves everything. So it's not, but the oneness involves everything, but obviously uh, the wife playing her role as the helper and the, the husband also playing his role. I'm going to come to that later. So we're not doing it with two heads. We're doing it with one head. We're doing it together. Praise the Lord. With one helper, the wife, and the other, the head, which is the husband. Praise the Lord. Now, I've said, the wife is to help accomplish part of the husband's dream. So when um, your husband has his dreams, you know, he has um, 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 his, his desires, it's not for you as the woman to follow your own desire as the helper you are supposed to help your husband to accomplish his dreams his desire that's when the the marriage that's when the marriage can be peaceful praise the lord the scripture said the help meet is to be comparable to the husband, to the man. That means, you know, um, um, it, it doesn't mean you're a slave. It means that you are counterparts, right? You are counterparts. So, as I've said, I, you know, I'm just trying to emphasize that. Uh, trying to emphasize what the Bible says as the wife being the helper. You're supposed to be a counterpart, but performing your role as the helper. Praise the Lord. Secondly, the wife is supposed to be a counterpart to her husband. Praise the Lord. We all know in a marriage, we've both come from um, different walks of life. Praise the Lord. 
but somewhere in between by the grace of God, we come together and we accomplish together. The Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and accomplish, uh, you know, uh, obtains favor from the Lord. So, you find, as a, as a man, you finding a wife, your wife is not supposed to be a, an antagonist. Your wife is not supposed to be your, 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 uh, your enemy. You're supposed to, your wife is supposed to be your all in all. Your wife is supposed to bring you good tidings, favor, praise the Lord. I remember when, you know, when I was, um, when we got married in the early stages, you know, uh, things were, things were really hard. I didn't understand. I, 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 I'm a Yoruba lady and in Yoruba, they say, <laughs> you know, for years, I used to wonder what that means. Uh, you know, marriage is one thing, an institution that there is no manual. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. There is no manual. You get it, you know, thank God now in, you know, in this, in, in this day and age, there's marriage counseling and all that. Praise the Lord. So at least you, you kind of have an idea, but even some people, even the marriage counseling, sometimes uh, um, God help you with whoever is counseling you, you know, it's, sometimes the, the, because you, you already have a mindset, sometimes you, you, you know, your, your ideas can, 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 can be a bit funny when you're married and you, 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 you know, you, you encounter different things, praise the Lord. Um, if we look at, um, um, Genesis 2, verse, um, God help us with time today, uh, Genesis 2, verse 21, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. So this tells us that the man and the woman are opposite, right? But because God brought the woman from the man, but God brought them together to become one flesh, to subdue the earth. So the two halves, the two halves feet. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to fast track a little bit. But I think we sort of get the picture of the role of the wife in, in, in the marriage. The role of the wife is to help the husband. Okay. So in, um, in 1 Corinthians 11, 3, um, it says the head of every man is Christ. Maybe we should turn there. I'm, 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 I'm trying to rush now. So, um, um, praise the Lord. Because after I've, I've discussed the... So now we understand that the woman is the helper. Now, that is the role that God has um, ordained for the woman. Then we're going to talk about the responsibility of the woman in the marriage, which is to submit. Praise the Lord. Um, in First Corinthians uh, 11, verse 3. But I would have to know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So, wives, the head of the woman is the man just in case you are confused about this the world preaches that um you both you know the man and the woman you are the same that is not true because actually even scientifically it's not true the wife has a womb 
<laughs> the, 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 the woman has a womb, the wife does, the man doesn't. The wife can birth children, the man can. So that's very clear that, you know, the, the man is the head of the woman. And the woman was created from the man. And the concept that says that the wife's role in life is to help the husband is 100% the will of God. Perhaps you didn't hear me very well. If, you, if you're confused because of what the world is preaching now, that the woman has, you know, um, uh, feminism, I'm a, I'm a strong woman, I'm a career woman, I, 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 I'm, I'm earning money, in fact, some women even earn more money than their husbands. Let me tell you, and let me tell you good. The concept that says that the wife's role in life is to keep the, is to help the husband is a hundred percent the will of God. That is what God said. So what the world is preaching now is not correct. Praise the Lord. Let's move on. Now, the wife is the helper. The wife is the helper. The next question will be, who will determine whether or not the wife is fulfilling her God-given role as a helper? Who determines that, really? Like I said, is it the world? Is it the wife? What's God saying? Praise the Lord. As the helper, the husband is to define the help he needs. The man should determine the help he needs, not the wife determining what help to render if she will help at all. So as the help meet, as the helper in the home, you, the husband, because I think that's where we get our wires crossed. That's where, you know, communication comes into place. You are to determine, as the head of the house, the husband, you are to determine what help you need. Praise the Lord. do I help you accomplish your, your goals? You know, there's the saying that says, behind every man is a great woman. And really, theoretically, if you see any strong man, any successful man, you know that the wife has played a very important role as a helper in the home. A helper you know, the wife has been supporting through prayers, praise the Lord, encouraging your husband and not putting him down. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So another question that I come to ask is, could it be that wives are working so hard but not helping our husbands? You're what you know, you're working so hard, yeah, dear. Yeah, this I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But actually, you're not actually helping your husband. And that's where the cookie crumbles. As you know, as the helper, you are supposed to help your husband to accomplish his dreams. So it's a question for you to ponder over. Is it that we're actually really Instead of us to be a helpmate, we're actually working so hard by taking the role of the man. Taking the role of the man and not assuming the role as a helper. Praise the Lord. Let's go into the um, um, submission. So I've I, 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 I hope you understand your role as a woman in the marriage. 
Let's go to submitting quickly. Praise the Lord. During our discussion, um, the, you know, I heard some um, um, some comments or uh, um, um, some some um, in the discussion. You know, some people were saying, "What's so submission? What's submission to you?" It, um, somebody said, "It's a res It's it, you know, it's respect, and it's supposed to be a mutual agreement." You know, somebody said, you know, um, submission to, to her means respecting your husband's values and things like that. Somebody said submission is not slavery. Or, you know, the world says submission means, you know, slavery. I want to tell you tonight, sub submitting. What does submitting mean? Submitting in the marriage means respect. Honor, oh, putting your husband's needs even before yours and his desire. Some people might be saying, mm, so what does that mean? Putting his needs first before my own, you know. So what does that mean? That means I'm a slave. No. Your responsibility as a wife now is that you respect your husband. You honor your husband. I, I think I heard somebody say, does that mean I should? Oh, yeah. Somebody said, oh, I, you know, in my culture or from where I'm from, I don't kneel down. I, so, you know, I don't kneel down to, to that's fine. You, culture also is a, is a very, very important determining factor in marriage. Praise the Lord. And you know, we're not ignorant also of that. If we turn to Colossians 3, then I will tell you what God says, what he means by submitting, so that you know, you know tonight, especially for the, for the men. So you know that submitting is not when, um, um, you know, you, 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 you're, you're both going to walk. And some, and then you you get back from you from work, and then the husband puts up his feet, and then the wife has to go and be cooking, and you've gone nine to you've done your nine to five. You both came. In fact, sometimes the men even come. The husband comes in before the, the wife, and then you know you'll be waiting. I, I was waiting for you to come back, and then she goes slaving, and that's why you know submitting is is a is. Is, is by the grace of God. I tell you, as somebody also mentioned that, you know, that the ability to submit is not by your power, it's by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. I don't know if, if somebody is there. Can somebody actually read for us Colossians 3.18? If, if, if you have a Bible, <laughs> oh, I think next time also you must come with your Bible. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Colossians 3 18. Yeah. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. That's it. Wives, hear me. You're special, you're beautiful. But this is the word of God. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. It is the will of God. So if anybody calls you a slave or anything, tell them, you know what? I'm obeying the word of God. Praise the Lord. What are the circumstances as, you know, as I, as, um, um, to, what are the circumstances for me as a wife to submit? Praise the Lord. Colossians 3, 18 has said it. Wife, submit to your husband. Praise the Lord. Um, 
I think it's very important also that I mention this. I'm, I, I want to really fast track because I, um, uh, you know, the, the, I, I don't think I have much time and I, I need to talk about the role. But it's very important also that I mention this. Um, submitting, praise the Lord. You know, in the in in the Bible, in you, you know, in the Bible, it, it's it says to come underneath, to obey, to follow, praise the Lord. So, you as a, as a wife submitting means you are to come underneath. You are to obey your husband, as the Word of God has said it. While, you know, your husband leads, you are supposed to obey. You are supposed to come underneath. It's not slavery. A wise woman builds her home. Um, I think we should turn to First Peter. First Peter 3.1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband. Again, it's not me. Don't, not, you know, after this program, please don't call me or text me and say, what do you mean by we're supposed to be underneath our husband? We're supposed to obey. It's the word of God that has said it. It says, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband. Subjection. That if any obey not the word, they also may be without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives. Praise the Lord. Submission means the wife is to organize herself underneath her husband. Praise the Lord. Wives are ordained to be submissive. That is what you have been called to do. That is your responsibility. Praise the Lord. So let's go back again to the characteristics of a submissive wife. According to Colossians 3.18, wives submit to your husband. Praise the Lord. So you're supposed to be, you know, under an office. Praise the Lord. Also, as is fitting in the Lord, we read it earlier in Colossians 3.18, it is the right thing, it is appropriate for you to submit to your husband. We've read it in Colossians 3.18. In Ephesians 5.22 to 24, you can write it down because I can't, I won't be able to open it now. I'm trying to fast track. The wife is to submit to her husband just as the church submits to God with joy in all things. Perhaps I should read that. But, you know, when you get back, please, Ephesians, when you're on your own, go and read Ephesians 5, 22 to 24. The wife is to submit to her husband just as the church submits to God with joy. So you're supposed to come submit completely. Also, in Ephesians, in the same Ephesians 5, 22 to 24, the wife is to submit, is to submit to her husband in everything. So I've mentioned four things. And guess what? You know, in a marriage where everything is hunky dory really that you know you you the, you 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 can't begin to test your ability to submit is when the wife is going in one direction and the husband is going in another direction and it's a case of okay um should i go with his own idea and sometimes even you you know it happens even though you know it's i mean it happens to me i know that what he's saying is not going to end up very well. Where he's heading to is not going to end up very well. So it's a case of, but well, naturally in the world, I'd be like, hmm, you know, this thing you are doing, 
I somebody somebody has done it. It's not going to. I can see what I usually say. I know the spirit of God is telling me. The spirit of God is not telling you anything. The spirit of God is telling you that you should submit to your husband in everything, even when he's making a funky decision. Now, where you now come in to be able to address that situation is in First Peter three one. First Peter three verse one. I, there's 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 a version. Praise the Lord. There's 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 a there's a version that I in God's word. Praise the Lord. That that explains it. The wife is, you know, in, in, it says, wives in a similar way, place yourselves under your husband's authority. That's God's word. Some husbands may not obey God's word. Their wives could win this man for Christ by the way they live without saying anything. It's not much. you are wrong. It, you know, I've experienced it. I know my feelings, I'm wrong. No. Women learn to shush, as they would say, femme, learn to shush. The wife is to submit by her conduct without a word. As a wife, as a submissive wife, you are to stop attacking your husband verbally, physically, because some people do. I want to tell you something today, if you do not know. What will soften a man is a woman that loves him regardless of whatever. Regardless, you love him without a word, without any, any condemnation, without any nagging. Praise the Lord. And furthermore, in 1 Peter 3, 2 and 2, 4, it says the wife is to submit to the gentle and quiet spirit. A gentle and quiet spirit. Like I, 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 I already said, you're beautiful. Don't, don't be that monster. Who is beautiful outside when you go out with your husband? Like, oh, you know, that's when you, you sit tight and you're you're playing the part of that pretty woman. And, you know, some people, when they want to give their husband's food in the house, in fact, they can just put it on the husband's head. When you go out, that's what you're saying. Darling, can, what, what would you like? What, what would you like to drink? You're now serving. You're playing the role. That is all pretense. The, wife, the Bible says, wives, submit to your husband in everything. Praise the Lord. And submission is as unto the Lord. Let me fast track quickly. I, I, I don't want to be partial. What's the role of the man? I'm going to go through this really fast. The role of the husband. The husband is the head. Tell me which head. He doesn't work. He doesn't, he doesn't bring anything to the house. I'm paying the mortgage. I bought the car. I am the one that puts money down for food in the house. Praise the Lord. Well, clap for yourself if you're in that position. But the Bible says the husband is the head of the wife. Praise the Lord. Husbands, are you actually leading? That's another question. Are you actually leading? Because remember back there in, 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 in um, the first um, program we had, I said, even parents also have a role, a part to play. We do not train our children to leave. We don't train our children to lead. And that's why they get married. 
And they think being the head is to sit back because they, they don't even, actually, maybe sometimes don't blame the men. Perhaps they don't even know how to lead because they haven't been brought up as such in their homes. They see their parents. It's mommy that makes the decision. It's mommy that plans the next holiday. It's mom that plans school is resuming. How do we raise money for school fees? It's mommy, mommy this. And that's why we see that our children, if you notice, they run to mommy first when it concerns important decisions. It shouldn't be so. Praise the Lord. The husband is the head. He's the leader. He takes charge. He's the authority. If we look at um, um, Ephesians 5, I will be bringing this to a close in the next five minutes. Praise the Lord. I would have wanted us to really, you know, really talk about this, but because of time, but I think we're getting it. Praise the Lord. Ephesians, Ephesians 5, 22 to 24. Again, I'm going to read the scripture again. The husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. So, husband, you are the head of your home, as Christ is the head of the church. It is his body, and he is the, its savior. And the church is under Christ's authority. So, wives are under their husband's authority in everything. So, the husband is the head of the wife, the ruler over you. Husband, how are you ruling? Be active. Be proactive. Lead by example and direction. You are the one steering the boat is where you steer it to. But if the husband doesn't even have a clue, even the people in the boat will be like, please, I, 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 I don't want the boat to cut size. Ah. This man, <laughs> I do not, I, I, you know, I don't want him to, husband, lead, bottom line, you are the head, lead by example, be proactive, think ahead, think outside the box. Like I said, why don't husbands even lead? Their, strong, their three strong beliefs believe in the husband's mind. Let me tell you, women, actually men too, why? you know, the, the, why the, the wrong belief in the, in, in the man's mind. Number one, I don't even know how to lead. True, like I said, he's never been in that position. He's never been schooled to lead. Two, I don't feel confident to lead. Your husbands are insecure because when they even say, um, darling, don't, 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 don't even start. Don't even start. That's what you did last year. That's what you did last year. And see where we found ourselves. Ah. You have to submit. You're the helper. Number three, I'm not successful enough to lead. For men, you know, some men are actually. Um, um, they actually admit this to themselves. I'm not successful enough. She, the woman is the CEO. Me, I don't even, I, I've been looking for a job. I don't even have a job. And even in my job, I've been in the same position. So I'm not even successful enough. Yes, all these things go through their minds. Let me tell you that. You being successful, being the CEO or whatever, has nothing to do with being the captain, being the, the head of your home. The Bible says you are the head of the home just as Christ is the head of the church. If you cannot head your home, please, how are you going to lead 
the church. Pastors, praise the Lord. I'm not singling you out. I, I apologize <laughs> to the pastors, but one thing, and God said it, if you cannot even lead your home, tell me, how do you pastor a congregation of 1,000? A congregation of, you know, 100? Praise the Lord. Tonight, I want to encourage you, husbands, what the right belief, right? You don't earn the right to be a leader. It's you are a leader. It has been ordained by God. God commanded you to be the leader. Finish. It has been ordained by God. And when you refuse or you do not lead, you are not you do not lead your home. You are not a leader in your home. You know what? You have disappointed God and you have disobeyed God. Praise the Lord. You know, um, the, it, what the real scripture, you know, the, the, the real spiritual leadership involves Actually, when we say leadership, leadership actually means service. In Ephesians 5, 2, you can open it. It means service. You know that um, most times, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm going to church. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. You know, actually, in, 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 in perspective, if you actually think about it, you know, God is actually the one serving us more than we are serving God. Because when you commit that sin, you go back to him. When you disobey, you go back to God. Praise the Lord. And one thing also that, you know, a wrong attitude that men also um, uh, show, you know, men are very, um, um, you know, passive. Some, in some homes, the, the, the men, and it's a wrong behavior. It's a wrong behavior. That's not a behavior of a leadership, of a leader. Passivity, you know, the man takes the back, back seat. You back off, you back off responsibility. You back off, you don't lead. It is a sin. Praise the Lord. Another, be, you know, another um, wrong behavior, abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse. Praise the Lord. Stirred up rage, you know, instead of dealing with the role of leadership. So leadership is not abuse to your, to your wife. It's like everybody is, is am I a doormat? Is that slavery? It, leadership is not abuse. Not emotional. Some people cannot see anything good in any woman, in, any, in their wife. Nothing good. And the, the last behavior, wrong behavior, abuse, um, absence. They don't, they, you, they, they're just there in the background. It's a wrong behavior. Now, as a leader, I'm going to read quickly as a leader. And then I'm done. As a leader in the home, you are to be a protector. You are to protect your wife. Number two, you are to be a provider, breadwinner. Your wife shouldn't have to worry about money. We're still going to talk about money issues in marriage later on. Men have stopped becoming breadwinners. They leave it to their wife. You are to be a scout. You figure it out. There's something, figure it out, men. Not the woman. She is your helper. She is to help you accomplish. You are to be a general in your home. 
You have to make decisions. What is better? Of course, while keeping peace, not, you know, so, cause some, some husband think I, I'm a leader. So we, I, 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 I <laughs> praise the Lord. I remember once upon a time, my husband used to say things like, I put my feet down. And every time he said that in the house, I would laugh like, ah, what are, you know, what have we said? What, you know, it doesn't have to be by putting your feet down. Praise the Lord. But thank God that, you know, we've grown and it's getting better and sweeter. And that's how it would be for all of us in Jesus' name. Number five, be a general. You have to make decisions. Numbers, um, sorry, that's number four. Number five, be a priest. Be a priest of your home, of your marriage. The one who is spiritual, the spiritual leader. You know, be tender. When your wife is down, don't worry, darling, it will be fine. Likewise, the wife too. Don't, you know, when somebody's down, encourage them. Number six, be a physician. Love, care. Carrying her emotionally, physically. Number seven, be, you know, king. Not king. But like I said, I put my feet down. I'm the decision maker is what I say. Nothing else. No, be a king in your home. Be a king. That means, you know, through dignity, honor. So being a king is not just, you know, through dignity, through honor. You know, praise the Lord. And, we, and, and, and wives also, no matter what, your husband is your king. Don't put your husbands down. Don't put them down. Let your husbands know that no matter what, at least once I get in my home, I am the king. I'm welcome. I'm honored. Praise the Lord. And in wrapping it up quickly, How you rule your home and the church, how you are faithful in your responsibility as a leader and a head, as a servant leader, may be very well determined by your greatest reward in eternity. The husband is the head of the home, just as Christ is the head of the church. So, you know, Jesus, I mean, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. How wonderful. You should love your wife just as God loves us. He cares for us. He nurtures us. He stands by us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, you know, like I said, it is your responsibility as a leader and a head um, a servant leader may very well determine your greatest reward in eternity. Leader in eternity leadership. Lead your wife now. She will love you till you die. And the Lord may reward you with leadership forever. Basically, what this is saying is that when God entrusts you with little things, such as being the head of your home. And you do it very well, just like the parable of the talents. You know, you do it very well. You take care, you protect, you nurture, you provide. Your reward is sure. Your reward of eternity leadership is sure. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So tonight, I say, men. Rise up and lead. Women, submit. submit. It is the will of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I want us to give a clap of faith unto the Lord. 
<laughs> oh come on i have you know i have learned a lot you know i do but i mean there are not things that you know i i don't know but you know as as she was talking i was evaluating myself i was like god am i doing what you know what the bible say i always do that anyway i try to evaluate myself am i doing it you know if they if if i was not you know in this in this place or where my husband is what would he say would he say my wife submits you know i don't know about you my god we thank god you know for the life of minister lola we thank god you know for this word i am you know i have taken notes look at look at me but plenty plenty oh my god you know I, in fact i i wish you know i can i can make it into a book so that i can even pass it on to my my daughter and my sons we praise the lord you know but you know we thank god and we pray that the lord will continue to increase you on every side in the mighty name of Jesus and your marriage will get sweeter and sweeter and so shall it be for all of us in Jesus name you know it's not a case of oh yeah I've been married for this so number of years I've been married for my god this year 30 years 30 years I was thinking of it the other day I was like 30 good years this year oh my god and I've known my husband for 10 years before we got married so I've known my husband for 40 years Yes. Oh my God, if I tell you when I knew him, you will be able to determine my age. For some of you who don't know, so no need, don't worry. It's when I retire, you will know that. Yes, um, you will know my, my age. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, you know, like I said, this is question time. Question time. Question time. I'm sure we have our questions ready, but I have one, you know, that I picked up on the chat please you can continue to put your questions there or you know you can unmute yourself and you know ask the, your question but i have one that was put there by you know a, a dear sister she said so does does that mean that we wives cannot have our own dreams and desires does it mean we cannot have our own dreams and desires if we have to put, you know, our husband's dream first? We have to, you know, be, be the helper. We have to submit. We have to follow his dreams. What about our own? What about our own dreams and our desires? When, when will that come in? when do we fulfill it how you know well i mean please i need somebody to to answer because of me too i always have dreams uh, you know and desires praise the lord and you know when how do, do i do it side by side or you know along with my husband or do i make sure his own comes true first before i even think of putting mine forward i need somebody to answer we've got pastors in the house please come on help us you know it's not about like I said, it's not about how many years we are all learning in this thing. If you know it, even if you married last year or even last week, you probably know much more. Please bring it. Let us, we need to learn. That's why we are here. The marriage mirror part two. Praise the Lord. So Hallelujah. Please. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Praise so, the um, Lord. Regarding that question, it is clear that the wife is the helper you know and that's why i said i will make you a help meet your yes you have your dreams but what god has called you to do first is to as a helper remember i said you know this is according to the word of god and not what the world says what God has called you to do first, your role, that the first thing God has called you to do is a helper to your husband, to help him accomplish some of his dreams. Praise the Lord. And Hallelujah. if you do otherwise, then you're not obeying what the word of God says when he says, I will make you a help mate for you know for your husband for the man praise the lord remember i see in the scripture um genesis 2 um 18 to 20 remember the what the, the 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 woman was removed from 
the 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 man right and so yes um you know your help makes comparable to 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 the man but by the time you start doing your own thing you're not fulfilling god's desire for you for your marriage which is woman you are the helper help your husband to accomplish his goals so yes i know we have our, our you know um our, our own dreams and what we have to do and all of that but the first the first duty that what god has said is help your husband accomplish and remember i also said two has become one anyway so what seems to be the issue two has become one i think that's where we 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 we, we you know we we sort of mix things up or we try to confuse ourselves two has become one so whatever your husband is doing it's also you know to your benefit praise the lord so as a woman, as a wise, wise woman, I would quickly help him to accomplish the, his, his, his dreams. Praise the Lord, because it will also benefit me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. I'm sure the sister will ask that question. Your question has been answered. Is there anyone, is there any more questions? Because I have one. I have one. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. While Praise people are thinking, okay, go ahead. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Minister Lola, for all you've said. They're quite taken in and uh, they, 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 we, I think uh, we pray that God will give us the grace to. Uh, just quickly, um, mine is not really a question I would say, it's just a bit of uh, uh, addition, you know, to what we're talking about in terms of salvation. And I believe when we begin to practice this, it helps us, both the husband and the wife, to ensure that, uh, you know, um, peace reign in the home. You understand? And I think um, it's quite key. Um, I will look at Ephesians 5.21, praise the Lord, which is mm -hmm. the beginning of, um, which of, you know, that particular aspect of the Bible when Paul talked about addressing Ephesians and talking about what we all cling to today, wives of it, husband, husband, you know, at the end of the family and all the rest. Now, uh, to have peace in the home, just like she said so much, we are quite honest and just the way it is. But I think one of the things we also need to look at, which probably we also portrayed the sister that asked that question that just been answered now. This is just my own addition to it. Like Paul said, submitting yourself to one another in the fear of God. In other words, where does that one start from? It starts from the man also recognizing the fact that, yes, I'm the man at the head of the home, but my wife has my wife uh, feelings, you understand? My wife feelings, my wife desires, my wife uh, needs also coming, you understand? Um, it would be, um, that means when we, when I have things I needed to do or something I'm proposing I want to do and, or I need to make a journey or I need to embark on something, I'm expected to discuss with my wife and listen to her side of it, you understand? And I, it's, I need to give her a listening here and ensure that, yes, she tells me what she feel about it. And then we all come to an agreement, with, you understand? We come to agreement and say, okay, let's do it this way. And if she has a point, if she has a point that, I mean, find it very valuable to my own feelings, you understand? That means in the, in fulfilling that five, Ephesians 5.21, submit yourself to one another. I think it would be honorable for the man also to say, yes, I think you are quite right, darling. I think your, your opinion is right. I think I will, I will, I will follow what you have said. And I think in, in, real context a man is also submitting there because the bible says submit to one another you understand in the fear of and secondly it also goes to the extent that if um there's any issue um uh, probably that arise and um 
you you before you take a decision, it's quite key. Just like as Sister Sola said, once you're married, you become one. We're all one now. There's no you understand. So that means my decisions, your feelings and my feelings, we need to marry together and then let's look for the best way. Let's look for the one that works out for the two of us, for the peace in the house, you understand? Because some of these things, I'm telling you, when it comes to practical things, you might find it quite a difficult thing to, 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 to follow in the house, you understand? But when there's a submission between both of us, I listen to you, I listen to your point, and where I think you are quite absolute, because nobody has the monopoly of wisdom, believe you me. In real practical, nobody has the monopoly of, of wisdom. You understand? So if your wife comes with a point and says, why don't you look at it this way? Of course, I will take what you said and say, I think you are quite right. And that in that aspect, I have submitted myself to her. And in other words, what Paul is talking about is that we should be accountable to one another. You know, submitting yourself to one another in fear of, that means I'm accountable to you. If you go to work, let's say, for example, you go to work and uh, coming back home and something happened, you need to you need to go somewhere, you understand? You're meant to be at home by six. You're, and probably you're leaving your office and you're, oh, I need to see something, I need to do something. In, in accountable to one, and I will expect my wife to call me or give me a text. I'm sorry, I, knew, I know I need to be, but I need to see, I need to go somewhere. You know, just send a text and say, I will be late. I need to stop some, but instead of just, uh, you're supposed to be at home by seven, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, you're not seen. And you didn't even tell anybody, I didn't think it's happening. And then you come back home and then what happens? Oh, I have to know. To me, I, I find that that is very, very wrong and it's not right. And I feel when we begin to submit to one another and the wife does his part and the man does his part, then the, 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 it should be easy for God to, to kind of help us to have a peaceful home. Now, let's look at quickly Genesis 6, uh, Genesis 6, 19, please, which I think is very, very key for women. Genesis 6 19. Praise the Lord. Am I communicating, please? Hello? Dickie, go ahead, please. We, yeah, we are short of time. Genesis 6 19. Oh, yeah. Genesis 6 19. Um, oh, 16. Sorry. Genesis 16. It's 16 9. 16 9. The opposite. Genesis 16 9. We all know the story about uh, uh, a guy. Praise the Lord. And we all we were also told when um, Sarah will call the husband my lord, my lord. That is submissiveness. The woman submits to her husband. And when there was a problem in the family, you understand, from a guy coming into the family, when eventually um, Sarah sh shows her displeasure, what did God say? God told uh, Abraham, send that woman out because he realized that. Sarah has been fulfilling the law of submission to the husband. So when there was crisis in the home, God listened to Sarah because Sarah cried out to God. Mm -hmm. And God said, call Abraham, send that one woman out. Praise the Lord. And eventually when Aga left home and then she found herself in that world that is, and she was alone. What the first thing the angel said was, go back to your mistress and submit to her before she now start telling, I mean, the angel start telling this disease. So you see, I think it has to be balanced and women, you know, your part, we know all we needed to do and men know what we needed to do. If you submit to one another in the fear of God, the man take the lead and ask you what he needed to do and the wife also feel a, fulfill her role. I'm sure naturally God who established and institutes for marriage will give us peace in our home in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. That's my nice. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Dickin. Thank you so much for uh, bolstering that um, that question. Thank you so much. I can't see any more questions in the chat room, but like I said, I have a question. Um, Sister Lola talked about um, the man being, you know, protective of the wife. That is, you are to protect your wife. And my question is, what, you know, when you say protect, what do you mean? Does it mean that, you know, uh, um, um, the man should make sure that, you know, uh, um, nobody comes near the wife or the wife is not, you know, he, he's following her all over the place, so she's not in danger or, you know, what does that mean? Because some, you know, we women, we look at protection, you know, in different, in different ways. What does that mean? 
Praise the Lord. I need an answer. Just as we will soon be finishing. Praise the Lord. As a protector. Somebody that, I mean, I mean, what the word means, somebody, you know, a protector, somebody who, 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 who is there, wraps their ra- hands round about you, who is there for you, you know, when you're um, 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 fearful about anything, praise the Lord, you're fearful, mm. you know, you're, you're, you're in danger, <laughs> Any, you know, danger somebody who protects you who's you know who's always there for you that's what that means who you know when when you're in a state of fear your you know your your husband is supposed to protect you and say you know what all will be well you will be fine praise the lord and like i said uh, you know you're in danger I, my husband always says this because I'm, I'm I'm very frightened of dogs, <laughs> you know. So um, whenever I see a dog coming in one direction, I'm already going to another direction. And, I, you know, for so many years, even till now, my husband is always saying things like, if I see a dog coming at you, you know, I would, I would, I would jump in front of, of, of that dog or, you know, jump in front of that dog to, to protect you from harm, from, you know, any situation. So that your husband should be a protector to the point of even putting their own life. That's, that's, you know, that's love, unconditional, agape, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I don't don't know if I've answered that question. Yeah, to, to, to an extent, I have, you know, a different okay. um, view about, uh, the, I mean, that is part of it. But I also have, you know, um, um, a different view and a different experience in terms of, you know, so, in sorry, terms of... Sorry to, sorry to cut you short. And, you hmm. know, you, as, as a wife, you should also have that sense of, you know, you, when, when you are at home and the minute your husband comes back he arrives you know you're at ease that oh my husband is here you mm. I, I i know he's here to to fix everything you know you're at ease there's a sigh of relief so that's that protect you know as a protector praise the lord praise the lord okay so um that as, as, as i was saying so I, I i understand you know that's a bit but for me i also look at you know protection as you know um especially for, for those of us who are married from you know from africa and especially when you are married from different tribes um it's you know I'm um I would say I am very blessed and you know uh, I I mean as the people who know me I'm I'm you know from Edo Edo and my husband is you know is um, Igbo Delta Igbo and you know when it wasn't it was before we even got married it wasn't easy for us to even get married because you know the 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 family had the idea you know that oh the Edo people are very wicked they are not people that you would want to get married to I tell you if my husband didn't protect me I don't think our marriage would be where we are because from day one he, he would not allow anybody, no matter who you are, he would not allow anybody, you know, talk to me in the way he doesn't like, or whether I am there or whether I am not there. He will fight that person with every strength in him. You know, and I I I I actually came to 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 respect and you know submit even the more to my husband because of that you know he made marriage sweet i always you know i i mean we've been married for like i said almost 30 years i used to say to him that you know what if we there is the opportunity to marry again i will marry him 
again and again. Because he made it, he made it easy. I remember one time, I didn't even know my husband wasn't speaking to his mother. May I so rest in peace for a long time. And I kept saying, why are you not talking to her? You must talk to her. I kept fighting him. Not realizing that she had said something that he didn't like. And he didn't speak to her for age, for, I mean, for years. And I was like, what is it? And then he said, oh, I think because I was pestering him for a long time. He said, I don't like people when they talk about my wife in the way I don't like. And I said, oh, is that the problem? I didn't even ask him what he did. I said, don't worry about it. She's my mother as well. Don't worry. Is that why you are not talking to her? You know? So, you know, to me, that is protection. When, you know, you, some men will allow sister-in-law to talk to their wives anyhow, not say anything, to me, that is not protection. Where, you know, people talk to their in-laws and they keep quiet and they don't say anything. Everybody knows my husband's stand. They dare not. Whatever they are going to say about me, they have to say it where he's not there. Praise the Lord. And, you know, that makes a woman really submit to her husband because she knows that she has the protection of her husband. She knows that she has the love of her husband. And that, you know, that's just what I just wanted to add to it. Praise absolutely the Lord. correct. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I, yeah, uh, there's a story that I heard. I think it was on... Um, um, uh, was it Instagram or something? One of the programs. So this, the 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 wife and the husband, you know, they were uh, having a, a misunderstanding and all of that. And then the mother-in-law comes, and then the wife starts to cry and all of that. So the the husband is like, "You better don't, you know, you better don't pay any attention to her. She has been abusing you. She has been abusing you since, and you know, uh, things like that." You know, so <laughs> you, so the, the the lady was like shocked and everything. So actually, that's that's very correct. That you know, there's some men that will stand even with their you, their, their family. They would they will stand up for you, and it's very very important. And like you said, it oh, you I mean that kind of marriage, the woman would submit without any struggles. Praise the Lord. So, the, you know, Lord. that's a very important point. Praise the Lord. Do we still have opportunity to contribute? <laughs> Hello? Two minutes. They can, yeah, two minutes. Thank you. Just to say to about issue of uh, protect, you know, protecting, um, uh, man protecting their wife. I have to say this, you know, with all sincerity, and um, my wife is not here, but the Holy Spirit is here, and uh, you know, it can be a witness. Uh, before we, you know, um, um, my wife and I met, you know, I was, in the, you know, uh, in a relationship thinking it's going to, you know, work out. But uh, over a period of time, I realized this lady, I was so convinced with them myself, uh, because you cannot lie to yourself, you understand? Two people, I've always believed that two people cannot be ignorant of lies. If the person if the person you're telling lies to doesn't know that you are lying to him or her, you will know that you are telling a lie. So it comes to a stage I realize, look, God forbid, if I go into this marriage with this person, if anything happened that trenches the life of both of us, I had that conviction that, look, I cannot live my life for this woman. I'm telling the truth. I was so convinced that there is no how I will put myself forward for this because of some attitude some character and that is covered that this woman has and um, based on that issue i just call us say what i said look i'm so sorry uh i can't hide this from you before we go further if anything happens that threatens your life i can't live my life for you i cannot defend i cannot protect you it was a difficulty to be to believe it at the end of the, the, end of the day i put my feet down even uh parents you know Came all the way from, you know, uh, came to Lagos, you know, to, they, they, they asked me to come. I just said, I've already called off. I'm not going into it. They came to Lagos, invited me. I went and I told, I said, look, I'm sorry, sir. This is it. It's better for both of us to just see the relationship now. Because I realized that she has this disease and she's not ready to change. And if our life is a threat, both of us, I'm telling you, I cannot live my life down. You understand? And for me, that's one of the key a man need to have before going into a marriage that you're convinced, you understand? 
And that, for me, as even till today, if I'm not at home, you understand, because of trying to protect your wife and your family, to do respect to single mothers in the house, God bless you. I that's a particular um, instruction I left in my house that, look, if you have any reason, because of everything that is happening in this country, people coming that you don't know, I, there is no way any repair will be carried in my house. I will make sure I am at home. I won't leave my wife and my family alone for a man, who, a stranger I don't know to come in and carry a repair in the house. Because I want to be there, you know, as a man. And I see that as part of trying to protect my family and protect my wife. You understand? So for me, there are so many ways. Yes, we have seen, we've seen it different. But I think as a man, now I'm saying from the man aspect, I see that because you, we have so many things. So many people will come into the house, do so many kind of things and maltreat women and just work out. I don't know who they, So I told them, if any repair has to be carried in the house, I want to be at home. That if I have to take my time off, I want to be at home. I won't leave my wife alone for such a repair for a strange person to come into the house and carry out a repair. And I think that's part of what I see as you know as protecting your wife and uh, apart from all that we have all mentioned which are also part of it so it goes beyond just that it goes beyond when life is threatened when you risk your wife life and that's just me thank you praise the lord thank you so much Deacon. thank you so much thank you um i'm not sure if you know I haven't seen any more questions and um, our time is even fast spent um but i'm sure we have had a good time you know i mean i'm sure we've had a good time go on let's put something on the chat if you've had a good time either you put a clap or put a thumbs up you know and you know see if you've if you've learned something you know i mean i'm sure i have i, I don't know about you but i have and you know uh it, it we've for me, it's it's been you know a very productive um, uh, use of my time, and you know I want to thank every one of you that you know that has participated that has come. Um, thanks you know thanks to um, Minister Lola for you know for the message you know and thanks to our music minister uh brother liar and you know i, I mean i'm sure we've enjoyed ourselves uh, you know please you know we will be i'm sure we would have um uh, uh marriage mirror three you know not too far distance praise the lord i'm looking forward to it i guess you know sometimes we should actually bring our you know young adults who are you know of marriageable age to this you know to this uh, um, 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 forum so that you know they can understand they can you know begin to prepare you know for a time you know like like this in marriage because sometimes when you go into marriage you know with a set mind that oh when i get there i am the boss <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, you will get there and you find out that you know <laughs> uh, you will know who is the leader and who is the captain and who is you know who is not so i'm sure we have learned so many things today that the wife should be submissive and the man is the head of the wife and the head of your home i mean the giving us so many things, you know, to think about, to ponder on, to pray about, you know, wives, please learn to pray for your husband learn to pray for your husband he, he is you know a man is 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 flesh as well whatever decision he makes that is right to god be the glory whatever decision that he makes that is wrong i ask you know if my husband makes a wrong decision sometimes i ask myself hey did i pray enough for him i begin to ask myself that question Please pray for your husbands. It's important that you pray for your husbands. And also, if you say to yourself that, oh, oh, I earn more than him, and this, and you are boasting about, sorry, I say to people, when you earn more than your husband, you are boasting about, I earn more than him. I earn more than him. Sorry to me, I, I think it's witchcraft because you, do, you should be praying that your husband should earn more than you so that he will take responsibility of his own, of the, the expenses in the house. And he probably give you some more change to look, you know, to look nice. Praise the Lord. So please let's be prayerful. The Bible says the wise woman builds her home and the, 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 the foolish one tears it down with her own hand. Praise the Lord. 
praise the Lord. I'm going to hand over to um, uh, Minister Lola to close. I don't know if, you know, our Reverend wants to say anything, um, but I think I am done here. Over to you, Minister Lola. God bless praise you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I really want to appreciate everyone once again for taking out time to sit for two hours. Honestly, I really, really appreciate you and I thank you for coming. Please, the next, um, the next one will be coming up, not, you know, shortly. And um, like um, Dick and Jones has said, please invite the young, young couple um, um, singles, please let them come because I'm sure if I actually heard all of this properly before I got married, the journey would have been, a, you know, it wouldn't be too rocky in the beginning. Praise the Lord. Um, yeah. Let us bow our heads. Let, let's pray. Our Father and our God, we bless you. We thank you, almighty God. Father, today is the day that you set aside. You made it possible. Lord, you made people connect that really needed to be here. Father, it is all by your power. And we are so grateful. Father, this time we pray for each and every one that has come on board, married, single, in the waiting room. Oh, Lord God, we ask that you will meet each and every one at the point of need. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord God, we pray for homes that are in trouble right now. We pray for the peace of God in that home in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for the singles right now. Father, we say that even in this season, Lord God, wherever their husband, their wife is, Lord, you will connect them in the name of Jesus. There will be no more delay in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray for singles, oh Lord God, that have a mindset of, I'm not even going to go into this. It's, 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 it's just too difficult. It's not worth it. Father, we ask that you will touch their hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Marriage is a beautiful thing ordained by God. And so therefore we say that these ones will not miss out on the blessings of marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we use this time, Lord, for people that do not have a relationship with you, that do not know you. Oh Lord God, we ask that you will minister to them in the mighty name of Jesus. They will come to know you as their Lord and their Savior. We pray for people that have backslidden. Lord, we say, Father, Lord, you will cause them to connect, to come unto you, O oh Lord God, because you are the resurrection and the life. Jesus Christ, you are the, tr you're the way, the truth, and the life. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we use this time, Lord, to speak, to, to speak, O oh Lord God, to the hearts of people that are looking for answers, that are asking questions and looking for answers answers, different answers that Lord, you will minister to them in the mighty name of, they, they will be consumed by the spirit of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, even at this time, we use this opportunity to pray for the entire world. In the name of Jesus, we declare that there is peace all over the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Every unrest, oh Lord, every confusion, in the world, even every confusion concerning marriage, concerning everything, the little things. Father, Lord God, we ask, Father, Lord, that 
Father, your, your power will rest upon each and every one in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare there is peace in the land. There is peace across the nations. There is peace on this earth and that your perfect will be done even in our homes, in our marriages, as husbands, as wives, as parents, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. As we go, Lord, we are not departing for, from your presence. We are going in that light that you are with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty God. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you, oh Lord God, for the people that you have even used for this program. Lord, that will, you will continue to lift up, to strengthen in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, almighty God, for in Jesus mighty name we have prayed somebody amen. shout amen 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 amen, amen. amen. just to say that you know that the program was um recorded as well and so if you want a copy please send an email to admin at tremfulam.org.uk that is if you want a copy of this um program today send you know send you your know, um your send an email to admin at tremfulam.org.uk praise the lord we can unmute ourselves we can shout this is the time to just shout let's hear your voices you have been hearing my voice since i'm sure you are fed up of hearing my voice and I'm like oh god that voice is not able to sound all right. yeah. come on let's hear yours Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thanks for coming. Uh, we Thank would you. actually communicate, you know, the next, you know, program to you when, you know, it is fixed. Praise the Lord. Thank you so Hallelujah. much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can see, I, I see a lot of people. people. Yes. I see Sister Tayo. Yes. I see Ayola. Brother Musa. Sophia. I see Olajide. Okay, that's speaking Olajide. I see Princess. I praise <laughs> the Lord. Oh, there are so many, so and many then, people. The, there's some grandmas I, in the house as well. You know, <laughs> I see Brother Joseph. I see, oh, who is this one? I see Brother Shegun. I, I see Sister Fumila. Yes. I see Fumila, Sister Fumila. Fumila Yola, you God bless you. God bless you. I see the King George. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I see the Kinema. God bless you. I see Sister Monica Mush Mushashi. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce your name very well. I'm sorry. Brother David. I see you. God bless you. Thanks for coming. I pray our marriage will get sweeter and sweeter. I see um, mm -hmm. Olushola, um, yes. Tolu, Olushola, Tolu, 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 yes. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. You so we much. appreciate your coming. God bless you. God bless you. We see, we see our reverend. You. And Pastor Maria, God bless you. Thank Pastor you Maria so much for Reverend, coming. God bless you, Master. Brother Kunle, we see you. God bless you. Brother we appreciate Kunle, you. Thank you. you. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. God bless you. Thank Hallelujah. you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Bye for now. Bye for now. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you.